This, this is an amazing place. I don't know if you sitting at home are as excited as I am right here. This is a real discovery. This is what barn finding is all about. I mean, this is, this is it, man. I'll tell you what, tear it. Don't, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you what it is. Whoa, whoa. Oh, wow, I know what it is. That's a, that's a, that's a first generation Corvette. Yep. Ah. Hi, this is Tom Cotter. I've been hunting down cars since I'm 12 years old, and I'm still doing it today. Follow me in this series as we hunt down hidden classics all across America. You may remember a couple of episodes ago, we met a, a gentleman named Dean who showed us his Etzel station wagon that he stored in his friend's towing yard in South Carolina. Well, he also has another group of cars in North Georgia. I can't wait to see what he's got. So this is a Rambler Marlin, which was AMC or Rambler Motor Company's version of a muscle car to compete against Barracuda and the Mustangs. So a 292 V8 and it's got only power brakes, no power steering, uh, no air conditioning. I live in near Charlotte, North Carolina. There were guys in Statesville, North Carolina that entered one of these new in the 24 hours of Daytona and, and raced it against Ferraris and whatever. I don't know how they did, but I have to commend them for doing something like that. Now, if you look at the body design, it, it's actually pretty stylish. AMC did not have a lot of money to, for research and development, styling, whatever. So they had to work with cars that they had and they used a lot of uh, parts off the shelf. But the back is actually quite, quite attractive. If you look at, you know, the, the roof comes down straight into this little, almost a fin right here. There's a picture of a Marlin on the gas cap, or it's an emblem actually, not a gas cap. But you know, even though it's got a large trunk, it has a very small, um, opening for the trunk so that, you know if you had a large box or something you'd be in trouble even though the trunk is huge so inside here if you, you cash if i walk by this car in a parking lot it's got an automatic but actually it, it's got a four speed the shift knob is an odd looking shift knob but it's got a reverse lockout like a mustang had you see the clutch pedal down here it's, it's a four speed dean told me he'd take three grand for this car i mean it's not a big block chevelle but you won't find another one of these at a local car show or Cars and Coffee. It might be hard to get parts for, but thankfully, this seems to be very complete. This, this was a car that a guy was going to make a drag car out of, never finished it. This is a, uh, a 63 Fairlane, Ford Fairlane sport roof. So it had the stylish rear C pillar and no B pillar. It's a hard top, no engine. It had an automatic. I guess it had a V8. Uh, yes, it had a V8. But look at this body and he wants 600 bucks for it. Uh, that's a good price. Hmm. Okay, what else you got? El Camino. Yep. Place the hood on that bad boy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Two four barrel big block, is that, what is that, a 502 or something? <laughs> 427, but it could be a 396, I'm not sure. But it is a big block. It's monstrous. Yeah. Yeah. Man. So it's got a bench seat, automatic on a column, Pretty standard interior. And how much would that one be? 8,500. Your prices are pretty okay. Has a big old 98. 70 model. 455. Air conditioning, full power. How much you ask for that one? I take uh, six grand. And it's a driving car. A driving car, yeah. So is that a 59 Chevy? 60, 60 Chevy. Uh -huh. 348. Really? Uh -huh. Oh man. Four speed car. Well, this is one of the rarest cars we've seen in a while. 60 Chevy Impala convertible with a 348 cubic inch, four barrel, four speed car. You can see the shifter. Yeah, it had a three on the tree, so now it's a four on the floor. That is a neat car, man. I had to have 40 out there. 40 grand. Yeah. You know, yeah. You, you can clean this up in a weekend. It would be make the whole difference. Man, that's nice. 
I'll tell you what, tell you what, don't, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you what it is. Oh wow, I know what it is. That's a, that's a, that's a first generation Corvette. Yep. Ah! Oh, jeez. Oh man. Wow, that, that's a blue flame six with three side draft Carter carburetors on there. That's wow. A number car. This was a car that General Motors made to kind of replicate a Jaguar, a big straight six cylinder with side draft carburetors, and uh, they never really did it. They, some people raced these things, didn't do very well. What year is this? 53, 54? 54. 54. So it had an automatic, it had a power glide. You could only get a Corvette with a six cylinder and automatic for the first two years. 55 was the first year of the V8. And it went down to a, a two speed automatic. Well, that's probably the rarest car we've seen all day. So this flips up and the top comes out yep. like that? Yeah, okay. Yeah, there's a top right there. That's the top. 3,600 1954 Corvettes were produced. They were all produced with the six cylinder, blue flame six, three one barrel Carter carburetors with a power glide automatic. If this were in concourse condition, Haggerty prices out at $138,000. This has got the larger horsepower motor, believe it or not. The, the standard horsepower motor was 150 horsepower. This has got 155 horsepower. If it were in excellent condition, 93,200. Good condition, 67,000 and in fair condition 44,700. In honesty that right now the way you see this it's probably in fair condition. But the fact that, you know, the hood that's missing is right there. The windshield is inside the building. He's got all the hubcaps for it. Uh, and it was it ran when it was parked here. I would say that you could bring this from fair condition to good condition in a week of cleaning, going through the hydraulics, get it running well and bolt on the pieces it's missing. So this is probably a good condition car that's just not quite there yet. A little bit of elbow grease would do it. So this is a 61 Ford Starline, uh, Sunliner, which was a convertible, 61 Ford. What motor's in that? Uh, 352, original motor, original transmission. Convertible's always, the floor's always rust out. What's, what's the floor? No, it's a pretty solid car. Three on the tree? Uh, oh, it's automatic, okay. Automatic. So Dean just said he would take 8,500 bucks for this car. It's a 352, automatic on a column. It doesn't have the original front seat. It's got the original back seat. It's originally a blue car. The back seat's still blue. The front seat's not correct. But I think a pretty attractive car. This, this is an amazing place. I don't know if you sitting at home are as excited as I am right here. <laughs> this, is, this is a real discovery. So that's a 57 Chevy Bel Air, two door, hard top, no post. It's got no motor in it. It's got a hole cut out in the floor where a floor shifter was. So this was, this was a hot rod. For you guys at home, I'm gonna ask how much this car is because you might be interested in it. And he needs to clear out this property. So there might be some deals here. Dean, how much for the 57? Uh, no motor transmission like it is, five grand. Five grand. 1978 T-top, four speed. What engine? 350, okay. So what do you ask for that? Six grand. There's some deals here, folks. That's a 280Z, I think. How much for that? 1500 bucks. Is, is it a manual gearbox? Yeah. And then, then you got a Z carb here. It looks like a 280 ZX Turbo. And how much for that one? I'll take uh, five grand for it. Five grand. And original it's a, motor, original transmission. And it runs. New turbo on it. And it runs. Yeah. Okay. This is what happens when the floor's right out in the convertible and you can't afford to do it right. You just lay a bunch of fiberglass cloth and Bondo in there and, and say a prayer. Two grand. 289? Is there any, like what do you got in the garage? Anything good? Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> oh boy. Grand Sport Convertible. 455 GS, air condition, power steering, power brakes, convertible. Is that automatic or standard? Automatic. This is a 1970 Buick GS Stage one convertible, 232 were produced in 1970 convertible. It had a uh, 360 horsepower on its 455. 
just to let you know how rare this car is and how much demand it is, in concourse condition, this car is worth $163,000. In excellent condition, $137,000, $111,000 in good, and $63,600 in fair. Now, tell me, how'd you find this car? This car came up at auction in Anderson, mm -hmm. I bought it. How long ago? Mm, about six months. Oh, Four months. recently. Recently, yeah. Yep. I knew this was coming up. So you said this is a one-owner car? It's a one-owner car. Man. And it runs nicely? It runs really good. Is, yeah. it, is this one of your for sale cars? Uh, I'd put a price on it, wouldn't care if I sold it or not. Mm -hmm. I'd take 50 for the car. And, and if it had a battery, it would start right up? Yeah, yeah. I've drove this car. It shifts nicely? It shifts nice, everything. It's this brakes? Uh, Probably. It's got drum brakes on it. Oh, it does have drum. Look at that. I think mm. it's got drum on it. But yeah. they're the wide drums. Yeah. But it is the original motor. It is the one owner. All right. Well, let's see what else you got in the woods here. Okay. How about for the Corvette? Two grand. So you got the engine. Needs a rebuilding. It's got an automatic transmission. Two grand for Corvette. This is a 68 Chevelle. SS 396, matching numbers car, big block, four speed. What what would you ask for this car? 7,500. So for a big block, matching number, Chevelle, 7,500. That's a no-brainer. Okay, so let's talk about 67. Now this is not an SS. It's it's not even a a two door. It's a four door, but 283. No okay, kidding. I got 283 two barrel, little tiny motor. It's got power steering, manual brakes, no air conditioning, no power anything. It's got an automatic. It's a four door. And what would you ask for this? Three grand. Three grand. Hmm. So big block, air conditioning, power brakes. So that's a 454. What would you ask for that? I'll take uh, 5,500 for it. $5,500. So this is a 64? 63. 63, okay. Oh, that's pretty sweet. Uh huh. So it was a 327? 327 with 350 heads on it. Four and speed. a four speed in uh -huh. a four door. It's lowered. It is lowered, right? Yep, it is lowered. With chopped springs or something. Uh, and it, it's low rider. Yeah. And so this runs? Yeah, it runs and drives. Good. And you selling that? Yeah, I'm selling it. What do you want? 4,500 bucks. Hmm. That's probably about it. Yeah. We're back in South Carolina on the western side of the state. And we've heard about a gentleman who's got a building with, with some unusual cars inside it. Cars that many of us haven't even heard of. So we're going to go see what he's got. Hello, Sam. Hey, good to see you, Tom. Good to see you. This is what barn finding is all about. I mean, this is this is it, man. Whew. Tell us what you got here. So what's that pretty little shape right there? This is called a, um, an ASA, and it's, it plays into some of the Ferrari's history. So so that's an Abarth. This is an Abarth, what's known as an early Alam Alamano Spider. So the next car is called a, a Zagato body double bubble. Now, what are these? These are the Berkeleys, uh, a British car that was uh, uh, fiberglass and aluminum construction. It does have a very unique kind of suspension that is uh, tubular, more formula car looking on some levels and that sort of thing, but uh, interesting construction being so light. So that's a steel body car, but the rest you have are aluminum? Most of them. This particular car is, it was a limited run car. It was a transition car, hmm. um, and it was called a Sestriere. I think it was named after some Italian Wow. Uh, the next car there is called a Record Monza. Um, that is a car that was more their race version, a little bit lighter, a little more low profile on the roof, that sort of thing. Do um, hmm. you have a favorite car here of this whole group? As far as maybe my favorite car might be the Record Monza. I think it's a pretty car and a, an interesting history mm -hmm. to that car, that sort of thing. Carlo Abarth was a guy like Carol Shelby. He would take cars that were rather mundane and soup them up. A little bit bigger engines, bore, our, bore them out, put headers on them and multiple carburetors, and make them into race cars like Carroll Shelby did with Mustang. And Abarth is a small car based on, instead of 
Shelby used Ford mechanicals, Abarth used Fiat mechanicals. So sometimes they used Fiat bodies and sometimes they used their own special bodies. A, a body company called Zagato in Italy built cars for various companies. They, they would make a Zagato uh, Aston Martin, uh, Zagato Ferraris. Well, this is a Zagato double bubble, of which there are a couple in this room. And it's a double bubble because you can see it's got a roof that has a little hump in it. Uh, that's so your head could fit in that area if you were tall and uh, you wouldn't hit the headliner. So these cars were uh, fast street cars and they were fast little peppy race cars. Not like with a big V8. These had small engines, 750 cc's, 1,000 cc's. But because the car was so light, they really ripped. And because they were light, they handled really well. Now this is called a, a record Monza. It's a 750. Cars like this would run at uh, Sebring and racetracks around the United States and also across Europe. I happen to like this purple one here. It has a, a different grill on it, a rather stylish car. This is a steel car. Most of these cars are aluminum. This uh, Abarth happens to be steel. You know, we're walking by a couple of odd cars here as well. These are not Abarths. These are called Berkeleys, or in England they call them Barclays. But here is a production-based car. It's a Fiat 600, and this is what uh, Carlo Abarth would get a, a, a Fiat 600 and soup it up. Little motor, expand it, bore it out, carburetors, and, and make what Carroll Shelby did with the Mustang. Make a production-based vehicle into a race car. And this is tough, that little wheels, a little ripping exhaust. And then over here in the corner, we have an Alfa Romeo Giulietta. And that's, that's an amazing car, an ASA, which is a uh, baby Ferrari. That car is a four-cylinder version of a Ferrari. The details, the styling, the mechanical bits and pieces are miniaturized Ferrari units. And it's a very rare car. I don't know how many they made, but in your life, you might see a couple of these if you're a car enthusiast and keep your eyes open. Pretty cool stuff. You have a really cool collection of cars. Thank you. Thank, thank you for allowing us to come in here. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Finding old cars, you've got to be a salesman. You've got to talk to old mechanics, find out where the old restorers live, go to auto parts stores, go to repair shops. So next time you're on your way to get pizza or a quart of milk, see how many cars you can find on the way home. Happy hunting.